on the shrinking lake. Stretching beyond the horizon, Lake Chad is a force of nature, a seemingly unbounded expanse of fresh water in the heart of Africa. But the land is advancing and these precious waters are disappearing. As we travel down the main river that feeds the lake, we realized how much wildlife is threatened by falling waters. <laughs> this is the river Chari. 95% of the water in Lake Chad comes from here. But river levels are falling dramatically. And now that's the main reason the lake is drying up. <laughs> These fishermen know that better than anyone. Their catches are falling because rainfall in the south, where the river rises, has dropped from 80 inches a year to less than 40. Less water means less fish. Umar told me he'd fished here for 20 years. Catches have fallen dramatically and no longer provide a living for the 10 families who depend on them. You find out in a household, formerly in their meal, there used to be fish at least once in a day. But now, only few can afford that. It's a, it's, a, it's a disaster. It's a disaster, really, when large population relying on something that is, is a diminishing. It's a serious disaster. At the edges of the lake itself, encroaching reeds and floating vegetation are choking the water. Only from the air can you see how vast are these islands in the process of forming. The equation is simple. Global warming means less rain, less water flow into the lake, and falling levels expose the new land. This is the front line of global warming in Central Africa. I'm on the southern shores of Lake Chad, and the island I'm walking on is one of the many that are emerging here all the time. It's not that the river Chari is silting up, but the levels of water out there in the lake are dropping disastrously. Further out on the lake, we arrive at an island that just wasn't there 20 years ago. Gunia Dam told me his village moved here with the advancing shoreline, but their catches are poor. The villagers dry and smoke their catch to sell in Jemena, the capital. Catches like this will earn barely 20 pounds a week for the six families who depend on them. Just a few years ago, they'd earn 10 times as much. In Africa, water is life. The lake and rivers of the Chad Basin are where some of the poorest people in Africa live their daily lives and where they try to earn their living. For them, there's no escape from the changes in the world climate that threaten their environment, their livelihood, perhaps even their existence. Well, earlier I spoke to Lawrence and asked him why the situation there seemed so dire. I'm standing on the northern shore of Lake Chad, Mark, and 16 years ago, I wouldn't be able to stand here because all this land, including the land you could see across the water, was covered by the lake. The shrinkage has been phenomenal. From the sixth biggest lake in the world, covering an area as big as Yorkshire, to something that you could fit inside England's smallest county, inside Rutland. And what you can see over my shoulder there, Mark, isn't a beach, though it may look like one, it's the desert advancing at the rate, rate of three miles, miles a year. All this adds up to a threat to the 36 million people who live here and depend on the waters of the Chad Basin. The scientists say climate change that's driving this, less rainfall, less water into the lake, lower levels. They say that will continue to the point at which the lake might dry up altogether. It's happened before in distant history. If it happens again, it will present us with a crisis on a scale that even Africa has never seen before. And there'll be more from Lawrence at Lake Chad tomorrow. Well, let's get to a reminder now of tonight's main news. It was revealed that four of the gang who tortured and killed Mary Ann Lenahan were on probation. Labour has revealed the mystery lenders who, who gave them nearly £14 million. Pounds. And on the third anniversary of the invasion of Iraq, British troops have been telling ITV News about the pressures on patrol in Basra.